Hello everyone, um, I am Debris, and I just wanted to walk through the cam of this part right here. What this part does, right, as you can see, it it holds onto this little limit switch, and it has some holes that connect to the leads, and yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's made out of wood, let me open the individual part file, it's made out of wood, it has, it's going to be machined out of like a 2x4, and doesn't need to be that strong but it it's it does present a machining challenge that's for sure so let's go through the cam the first operation that I added was a adaptive operation that machines away the top part of the stock so right I use various like our generic feeds and speeds for the machine that we're using we're using a Shapoko 3 CNC router with some with some new motors and a better spindle and uh, heavy duty Z axis, which is pretty great, honestly. Um, but spindle speed is about 20,000 RPM, um, 60, 60 inches per minute, which translates to, a relative, translates to a relatively low feed per tooth. That's just because of the Shapoko. The Shapoko doesn't like very high, very high lows on the tool. It just freaks out and I don't get as precise um, measurements as I would like. Uh, and in the geometry tab, right, I just specified the outside edge of the part tool outside boundary and rest machining turned on so and from job stock instead of oh from job stock yeah from job stock because there's nothing really else that i have but yeah this what this thing eventually does right the, the heist tab is the most important part here it machines only from here to there right it only machines away the top part of the material and since it is tool outside this boundary it will machine everything just about like this Right, so I'm doing this for one thing so I can see in the part more easily when I'm machining it, and also so that some toolpaths like this contour coming up don't actually um, go too far inside the... Well, don't, don't, don't cause a big bat <laughs> with the end mill, let's just say. Notice I also use the, um, the both ways adaptive. Right, the yellow lines can show that, and right, that's just because wood, wood is so forgiving, so... It's faster to machine with both ways for the most part, so I just decided to use it. And, um, yeah, that's the first adaptive operation. I do another one after that. What this one will do is it will just remove away anything inside of this middle part. It is constrained to only machine, like, on the inside of this part, I believe. Yeah, the silhouette of the part. And tool center on boundary instead of outside boundary, which means it will only machine on the inside of the part. And same fees and speeds as the last one. But this this time it machines down to the bottom of the part instead of from, what is it? Yeah, instead of from that, that top edge up there. Step down is relatively small again. It's just because of the machine. I would rather go at the full depth of cut of that end mill, but I don't really want to risk it on this machine. So, stock to leave, radial, 10 thou, and most stay down level is because um, the Mach 4 controller we put on the Shipoko, we turned up the look ahead line to like a thousand, and it can just take any sort of big chunk of G code with no problem at all. So, we just decided, to, I'm, I'm deciding to go with uh, a most stay down level, and therefore the operation could be a little bit faster. So, that's the second adaptive operation, 2D contour right here. This finishes a lot of the sides and makes all these makes these reliefs for so that the so that the corners are broken and you can actually fit the limit switch in. And it has it's relatively simple. It moves at a slower feed rate and it just you just select all of these like that line and a few other lines down here that just just finishes the surfaces and finishes the finishes the size just so it looks nice for one thing and also just so it, that it actually fits the limit switch correctly and flow this is kind of I don't I honestly never needed to put this little um, edge here right um, but it looks cool <laughs> it's not even the right angle but it looks cool it looks cool as you can see this kind of like a <laughs> it kind of fits to the limit switch like that but it it really doesn't matter. I, I never really needed to put this, but I think it looks cool. So, yeah, we're going to keep that in there. Anyway, this part, 
I realized like this Spoko does not have a automatic tool changer or anything like an like an actual SMTC like from like a Haas mill or something that I that I've always wanted to use. <laughs> um, it has only a single. It has one of those uh, 1.2 kilowatt spindles. Simple, simple little thing. They're they're really great. They're really nice and great and cheap, but they just aren't. They they aren't. <laughs> they are on a Haas spindle or a or DMG Mori, let's just say. So, but, oh yeah, again, they cannot change tools. So we just, instead of using a small, changing to a small end mill for just for these holes, I'm just going to machine a little bit down into the material. As you can see, it machines a little bit, a little, a little into the material, but that's just so it can mark a hole that I can drill a little later. Again, it's wood, right? <laughs> and. It's it's good enough for wood, let's just say. So next we have 2D contour. This is the contour passes. These are the contour passes that actually cut out the part. Notice I'm moving in the conventional direction instead of climb because you generally conventional I found gives a better finish on wood. Um, yeah, I didn't really mention that before. I used mostly climb for these adaptives, um, but then I switched to conventional for the contour and. I mean, this is something else, but conventional for the contour and conventional for this. And that will give me a better finish than, better finish than like, what? Yeah, I'm machining in the climb direction. So, yeah, that's the cam for this part. Maybe that was a little little in depth and a little little long, but but I, I, I just kind of wanted to show, show off what we're doing here. So, again, this is for my my FRC team were making a certain part that does something that I can't tell you right now. <laughs> so yeah, let me let's go over to the CNC router and actually cut this thing out. Okay. Um So here we are at the Shapoko. I'm just gonna move this around. Nice, looks pretty cool. <laughs> um Let's load our file. We're all ready for action. I'm going to put the graphics to 50% for now. Let's start. Got cut on the bottom and sides. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Not the best. Not the best part. Let me, uh.
I guess, yeah. Did it chip or did it come out? I mean, it came out, but like, not the best things in the size, etc. You didn't drill the holes? Um, I didn't because I didn't use the small end mill. So yeah, that's that. I'm gonna work on that tool path. That needs to be improved. Alright, so I got a part out of that, but I need to make sure that this entire face here actually gets finished well, so I'm going to... Nope. Sketch. Put a sketch on this thing. Slap a line right here. Another line back here. And then I'm going to have the end mill machine that line instead of the actual actual line um, lines there. The lines on the side. So that means and cool and they're both the right direction. Okay, I'll take that. So how does that look? That looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I'll take that. What else needs to be improved? The rest of the toolpath seemed okay. I like, I wanted a smaller, maybe a smaller step down or like larger lead out radius, but for the most part, I think it's okay. Again, Shifoko, not as rigid as I want it to be, but I think I think it performed. The toolpath performed pretty much okay, except for a couple uh, a couple of those things there. So let me uh, just post process this thing, and we'll get back to the router and finish it up. I just post-process one of the operations, so let's do them all this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty stinky, isn't it? So, looks like we're good now, though.
All right, I think I'll call it a success for now. I've got five pretty good parts here. You only saw four, but I machined the fifth one um, a little, a little while back. But got five, five good parts here, and we're that's that's it's good. <laughs> it's it's good. But of course, a few things need to be addressed. I think that wood has wood wood likes to chip it's it's wood it's not metal and i would rather machine these out of plastic or something so i don't chip like that but but that's wood wood chips like that wood's nice and light though so it kind of makes up for it um maybe i shouldn't have used douglas fir or something could have used like a harder wood but these are nice and light again mm, flow tool path went fine the side finish isn't ideal. Like the, it, it still doesn't machine this correctly. Well, I mean, it machines it fine. It's pretty smooth, but it just isn't isn't great, you could say. But I think all these parts will work fine for what I want them to, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of that cam. It's kind of kind of maybe a little, maybe, maybe maybe a little unnecessarily complex. Um, and a uh, crash here and there, but it's. It's, yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, toolpath occlusion. Yeah, so, that is that. SMTC limit switch cup has been successfully machined and is ready for action and will be put on the robot shortly. And yeah, thank you guys for watching, if you managed to stay for this long, and see you later.